This is the first time in two years that you've actually been able to come here and see this. One of Indonesia's most rare and really secretive coral farms. What is the value of all of the coral sitting in these tubs right now here today? Over 100,000. What's up guys, my name's George and I'm here today with Scuba Steve from Top Shelf Aquatics. What's going on guys? We're gonna be giving you an exclusive first look into one of Indonesia's most rare and secretive coral farms. If you don't know, two years ago, the coral trade in Indonesia came to a halt. They've completely banned all exports of corals out of this country. And within the last six months, Indonesia just opened back up. This is the first time in two years that you've actually been able to come here and see this. Scuba Steve, tell yeah. us a little bit about this. What's going yeah, on? 30 hour flight and we made it here. So this is one of the farms that we pick some of our rare corals from. It's an opportunity for you guys to see kind of how it works and the process. It's amazing. There's some insane corals that we actually were able to get. You'll be able to see the farm where they mirror culture and grow different types of corals as well. So okay. how do we, um, so this guy doesn't want us here. Hati hati. Hati hati. A lot of coral. But we got about five, maybe six workers in here working on miscellaneous things in the farm. The first guy, the first step in this process is right down here. So these are huge concrete tubs. Uh, they do have some filtration in them, but the cool thing about this is there's no water changes. This is actually plumbed right out to the ocean. So there's a pump out there. It comes in, cycles the water, and comes back out. So they don't have to worry about any nutrients, trace elements, or anything, which is really neat. What's over here? Hundreds of wells, those, which is awesome. And these are not just like regular wells, those guys. These are rainbow ones that people like look for. I mean, you've got the rainbow literally on top of a coral. How much do those well sows go for each? We're probably going to sell them retail for like 120 bucks. Steven has a very good eye for yeah, corals look at this pop. one. Yeah, Out of hundreds of them, I, I might only choose like four. Steve and Sutan are actually about to pick out some corals that they're going to take back home. They're going to show you how they use the blue flashlights they have to see which corals have really cool fluorescent colors. Some of them look brown just in the daylight, but when you shine this blue flashlight on them, you'll see some incredible colors come out. So we found this chalice in under uh, daylight like, yeah, it looks kind of okay, but obviously when I'm using my blue handy dandy flashlight, this is Whoa. what we see. That's gonna be in the thousands, that piece. So Sutan and Steven, they picked out this entire row of Vacanthophilias. This is what they look like during the day, and then this is what they look like with the UV light. Check this out. So this is gonna be the perfect example of a coral that just looks kind of average during the day. This coral looks brown. It literally looks brown during the day. Are you guys ready? Boom! Whoa, it's like orange and green. This was, so far, the pick of the trip. A Blasto Musa? Trust me, I know my Blastos. Sutan knows his Blastos, and we were super excited excited about these. Right, so how much would something like that sell for? One, two, three, four. He's counting that polyps, how many heads this coral has. Probably about $5,000. That's a $5,000 piece of coral. Seriously? A money piece. Yeah. yeah. That was the first night walking in here, looking at hundreds of corals, and it's like, Whoa. it's just like, it talked to us. <laughs> what they're gonna do is they go into the ocean and then they have big colonies that they've been growing from these little discs and they break them down even smaller. So let's say it was a colony this big of these frog spawns that has let's say 30 or 40 heads. They break them down into heads of three and four. Let's say half of it goes for sale, the other half goes back in the ocean for it to grow again. A couple months later they come back out and they keep switching it out. It's a process where they're able to actually farm it here in Indonesia, be sustainable so they're not collecting off the reef and giving us back home a bunch of coral. And that's the process called mariculture where they're basically farming corals here, right off the shore, we're about to show you. And then in the United States, when we do that, it's called aquaculture. What is the value of all of the corals sitting in these tubs right now here today? Retail in the United States? Over 100,000. 100,000 US dollars worth of coral. In Easy. The facility. Retail, yeah. This is the thing though. The freight cost for us to import this is usually more than the corals. I mean, per box is hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Do the farmers here know how much this stuff is selling for in the United States? For the most part, they're very aware. But they also understand that, you know, in the United States, the cost of living is a lot higher. 
there. So it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars here in Indonesia. Being sustainable here in Indonesia is one of the most important things. So they're not just ripping the reefs apart. People being educated about aquaculturing back in the States is really going to improve the hobby overall. There's a doorway right here. Yeah. Uh, Where are we going? Do you call this a door? Uh, not quite. The farm is located right here on the ocean. So these are what they call transport racks. The divers will actually go out here in the water, collect the coral, put them on these racks, and then bring them up into the farm that we just showed you guys. But more or less, so these guys are taking the coral, they're growing it right in their backyard. Yeah, yeah, the process too, they actually bring the corals up a couple days before the export and clean the corals because there's a lot of algae. So they actually scrub these corals. Once we get done picking, whatever we pick, we'll actually go back into the ocean until we're ready for our shipment, which is really cool. That's so nuts that they're literally growing them in their backyard and then bringing them indoors to the farm. It, that's just wild to me. So he's essentially taking, it's almost an epoxy concrete mix. He is putting it in the cylinders of the frag plug and then he takes the coral that they actually broke down from the ocean. They're making smaller little colonies. These different vats have different purposes. So this is gonna be more of a soft coral. Um, it's gonna be lower light, lower flow. And then you're gonna have some of the more harder corals. When they start bringing the acros in, you know, it's gotta have a little bit more flow and a little bit more light. I'm pretty sure these are orange euphelias, right? Like orange frog spawn. Yeah, so this is orange octospawn. So the difference between octospawn and frog spawn, octospawn has a bunch of smaller like head. Frog spawns are gonna be a little bit bigger. So I know that in the hobby, usually any corals that are orange- They're more are, rare. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Orange euphelias yeah. are really rare, like the orange porch corals, right? Yeah. And like yeah. all that. Before Indo shut down two years ago, one of these discs would sell for about three to $400. After Indonesia shut down, you can no longer get these. The ones that were already in the United States started selling for, you're looking at like almost two grand, right? For yeah, these yeah. The price is probably gonna go back down to where it originally was. When Indonesia opened back up, they actually had inspections and so forth. They can't even sell the corals that they were growing out there because they said that they were too big. There's a variety of different acros here, right? Yeah, so these acros actually are not for sale. I can't even pick these. Why not? Because these are wild that they're going to start having mother colonies out there with, which is kind of cool. So we have to wait maybe six months to a year before they can break them down, make them a little bit smaller. And then once they are growing kind of like the euphelia, then I have an opportunity. Now, the cool thing about this is it gives me an opportunity to kind of look at the wild pieces and say, hey guys, this is the piece I want in six or eight months. Put those on a special area for me so we know which ones we want back in the day. This is what we call their photo booth. When we oh, wanted corals. This, hold on. Yeah. This is their photo booth. This is their photo booth. When you ask for photos from the States, yeah. this is what they put them on. Yeah, under. so what they've done is they've made light blockers out of cardboard and then they have some T5 light and they actually slide these up and down. So essentially they're just taking pictures of this. They'll send it back and be like, oh yeah, that's really cool. We want that. Or, yeah, no, we're gonna pass on that, so. Wow. Look at this, that's pink. Yeah, that's like a very purple. Yeah, so that's pink right now. This coral looks blue, right, with yeah. sunlight. Yeah. Watch this, brown. It's just nothing changes. Yeah, yeah, it's ugly. It looks great in sunlight. Put it in uh, blue light and it looks like a turd. <laughs> Using the light, Steve, yeah. which one of these would you take home? So there's about 300 of them right here, but honestly, I'd probably take them all home at this point. <laughs> so, I mean, look at this, this is straight rainbow. There you go, that one right there. But yeah, this is the rainbow wells though. I mean, we haven't seen that. Even me doing this, full time for 10 plus years and working every day, I get to still see different types of stuff that I've never seen before. So if you guys indirectly want to buy any of the coral that you saw here today, make sure to visit topshelfaquatics.com if you're a consumer and make sure to visit Aquatic Realm International, that's Sutan. If you have a resale license, you're able to buy wholesale. Thanks so much for watching this video. This was really an amazing opportunity for yeah. me to come here to Indonesia to see what the beginning of the trade and where the hobby starts. You know, yeah. I've been keeping coral and fish for over 10 years. It's crazy because I've only seen coral in fish stores and uh, wholesale facilities in the United States. Being able to come here to see all this is really a privilege. It definitely took a lot of work to, to get access to this to be able to show you guys. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to support the channel, subscribe to Coral Fish 12G. We'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. Watch out. too, they're making them out of concrete.